Hello, I'm Martin Delaney, and today we're looking at building bigger operator base parts in Ableton Live. So let's start by using Command G to put operator into a rack. This is a live set from last month. Now let's in a rack, we can unfold it using these small buttons here to look at the chains in the rack. You see there's only one at the moment. What we're going to do is add another instance of operator so that plays alongside the other one. We're going to leave this one on the default setting, which is basically a sine wave. You can use the rack. Mix the tools here to help you while you're working on this stuff. And I'm going to transpose that down. We want more like a sub bass kind of sound. You might find it disappears off your monitor. This depends on your setup. If it goes too subby, uh, you might need to work on headphones or you know, you might have to get some more monitors or a subwoofer, a separate bass box. Okay, so let's use Command R and rename these chains high and low. Then we're going to go to our audio effects and we're going to add an EQ3. We're going to drop one on each chain. It's very important. Then we can use the kill switches, the low, mid and high kill switches to separate the frequencies. So we can just get the lows on one and the highs and mids on the other. You may need to change this setting depending on what your bass sound is like. You might want the lows and mids together. You could always create three chains and have low, mids and high all being processed separately. Once you've done that, it gives you a lot more control. You can process these frequencies separately and create a much richer, deeper bass sound. So now let's go on and actually do something with these separate chains. For the high frequencies, I often like to add edgier sounds, distortions, erosion, bit crunches, anything that's going to give it a bit more edge. Normally we leave the load end quite clean. Ping pong, you know, I like this kind of thing, ping pong, auto pan, although these can these can kind of change the nature of your sound from being a simple bass sound into something much more active and dominant, which you may or may not want for your track. Yeah, there's the auto pan. I kind of like it because it keeps the um, it keeps the bass end solid, front and center. Keeps the lows right where they should be in the middle. It starts to turn into almost like two parts playing at once. Let's go back to the high chain, go back to operator there and change the filter to low SVF. The SVF filters do something kind of cool. I'm going to bring the resonance all the way out. And you can hear already, you get this weird kind of cool feedback. It's like a self oscillation thing. What's your volume while you're doing this though? It can get kind of squeaky. This sounds really cool if you map it to a physical control on your keyboard or your MIDI controller. It sounds much more interesting when it's moving than if you leave it static in one position. Obviously you can also do this effect by using clip automation, using clip envelopes to kind of program a sweep with the filter frequency.
Okay, and finally, you could try adding an arpeggiator to one of your chains. Let's do it with the high chain, which means every time you play a note or a couple of notes on your keyboard, you're getting an arpeggiated sequence, but just one bass note to go with it. It's like a variation on the ping pong, you also pan, it has that kind of same feel to it. This is another big sound, it could be too much for a lot of things, but you know, it, it's just, you know, it's fun, it could work. It's a little big and overbearing for a lot of uses, but it definitely has its place in the right mix. You might need to go into a low chain and limit the number of voices to one so that when you hold down a chord, you're not getting a chord in the low bass as well in the sub. Thank you. 